welcome to another video and welcome to this tutorial in this problem we are going to be discussing um main final theorems which is mft and if you are just coming to this channel please do well to subscribe and turn on the notification bell okay uh this main value theorem uh, is also known as the lagrange's main value theorem so any of the two uh both are correct and uh let's see uh what the theorem states so this theorem is just like uh the theorem that we stated in the enrolls theorem and uh, so what makes the two differences is just like how we use them and how we'll apply them in a questions and suppose we are given if f of s is differentiable in an open interval a comma b and continuous in a closed interval uh, a comma b then we are going to have a constant value l such that l is a member of a comma b so so that we have this particular formula which is f prime of l equals to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a but we must know that the value of b here must always greater than a so if you are given that interval the value of b must always greater than a if you want to choose so we look like okay which one is greater so the one that is greater will be the value of b and why the lesser one uh the smaller one will be the value of a so make sure you note that but you are going to determine these two value in this close interval a comma b which is the square bracket and uh uh, we should know that the value of l i use there so it's just like temporary so if you want to follow the step you firstly find the derivatives of f of x so and that l is just like a constant you must firstly find the derivative of f of x then after getting the value then you now replace the x with any constant value of your choice so in the formula above i use l so here i use c so you can see use l you can use m you can use n you can use p just any constant value of your choice just assume it okay now what are now the condition of differentiability and the continuity because if you are given a question we must firstly verify that is this really differentiable in open interval a comma b and continuous in a closed interval a comma b so if the conditions are ascertained then we are going to proceed with the next step and what are now the uh, criteria for differentiability and continuity the first one is polynomial uh, function logarithmic function exponential function and trigonometric function just like the rose theorem and uh, for the polynomial function we have f of x equals to x plus uh, let's say x plus 2 as this x raised to the power of 1 which is a linear polynomial so i will not be able to explain uh this in detail here because i've done that in rose theorem in my previous video and we have logarithmic function suppose we have f of x equals to the log so we just have log x so that is logarithmic similarly with exponential if you have h of x equals to e raised to power of x raised to power 2 so this is exponential because e here is euler then we have it as exponential you can call it euler then we have trigonometric function uh suppose i change the function to g of x then we have cos uh 2x as cos is a trigonometric uh, identity then we still have um g of y so that means that the what was plugged in in the function must reflect in the right hand side if you use y you use y if you use s you use s if you use m you use m that's just it and let's see the first example to beautify the explanation above uh, we are given this f of x equals to x squared plus s minus 1 on a closed interval 0 comma 4 and we should know that the first condition has already been met because uh x squared plus x minus 1 is a polynomial function so which means that the degree of this is 2 and it is a quadratic polynomial so in the the previous one i gave is a linear polynomial because the degree is one why this one the degree is two that is it is a quadratic polynomial so which means it is automatically differentiable and uh, continuous and here is the formula we are going to apply so f prime of s equals to f of b minus f of a divided by 
B minus A. So here is the formula for M phi T, which is the mean value theorem or Lagrange's mean value theorem. And we know that B must always greater than A. So and uh, in this, so in this problem, you know, we are going to follow uh the steps of this formula that is you must be providing all these criteria before you can start substituting okay and uh since it is polynomial you know it is an automatic uh differentiability and uh continuity on what on any negative infinity to any positive infinity that is you can plug in any negative value it will always continuous you can plug in any positive value it will always continue. So that is the value of negative infinity to positive. That is negative of any number, positive of any number. So they must always continue as far as it is a polynomial function. And here we have a b to be 4 and a to be 0. How do we know this? So from the condition that b must always greater than a. So we choose the greater number for b and the smaller number for the value of a. And after knowing that, what are the things we must provide in this? So we must know the value of uh, b. But let's see the question first. We have f of x equals to x squared plus x minus 1. Uh, if I want to determine the f of b, uh, we have already know the value of b, which is 4. So to know the function of that f of b, so we just replace s with 4, and which 4 is already our b. So that is f of 4 is also our f of b. And uh, after we plug in all this value, so we have uh, 4 squared plus 4 minus 1. And the entire of this becomes uh, 19. So 16 plus 4 minus 1, that is 19. And uh, for f of 0, which is the value of a. So we just plug in value of 0, which is 0 squared plus 0 minus 1. And the entire of this becomes negative 1. All right. I think we have provided three. Uh, four different things from the formula f of b f of a b and uh, a all have been provided and uh, so it's just more explanation that f of b is also f of 4 which is 19 and f of a is also f of 0 which is minus 1 so and the last thing i'm going to provide uh here is the f a f prime of x that is the derivative of the given functions i know that the given function is f of x equals to x raised to power 2 plus x minus 1 so if you now differentiate it as if we find the derivative dy dx so then we are going to have 2x plus 1 because if we differentiate 2 x raised to power 2 we have 2x and the measure of x that is 1 and the measure of 1 that is 0 so from this, uh, the next thing is, uh, as I, I stated earlier, that we are going to replace x with any constant value. But before you replace it, you must make sure that you differentiate. So if you now replace this value of x with, uh, don't forget it's f prime, then x with c. So that is, you know, anyway, I see x here, I replace it with, it with c. So we have 2x plus c. Then we can add back to the given uh, formula for m50, which is the main value theorem, as f prime of c equals to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a and we know that f of c is 2x uh, 2c plus 1 equals to y f of b we have gotten which is 19 and f of a is minus 1 so we plug in all those one as well so we have minus already there and f of a is also negative 1 so we make sure that that negative still remain there which is minus 1 just create bracket to avoid confusion so here we have 4 minus y the value of a uh, is going to be 0 the value of b equals to 1 so we also replace them in the formula and so i've done that already uh, let's further simplify uh just to uh to get the value of c because that's our aim to know that constant value in the open interval a common b all right so uh, minus minus is plus, we have 19 plus 1, and 4 minus 0 is still 4. So uh, the entire of this is 2c plus 1 equals to, you no know, 19 plus 1 is 20. And, uh, yeah, it's 20 divided by 4. Then we have 2c plus 1 equals to 5. And if we transfer one to the other side, it becomes negative. We have 5 minus 1, and c 2c equals to 4. Then the value of C here, when we divide both sides by 2, it's going to be 
uh, c equals to 2. And we should know that this c is the constant value that we refer to in the definitions. All right. That is, uh, after we get the differentiability in the open interval and continuity in the closed interval, there exists a constant value. That constant value is the value of c that we just got, which is 2, and it's a member of 0, 4. Because considering this number line, we have 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you uh, we have the value of 4 within this interval. That is, it is always continuous. All right, and uh, since it is continuous, which means that the main value theorem is automatically verified for any real number that we are going to have. That is negative infinity, positive infinity, as it is in 0, 4. And then the first part, and uh, let's see the second questions. And uh, let's verify this, but I'm, I'm going to be very fast here since I've done one example. So A is 0. Uh, b is pi and uh, you know from the definitions uh, or let's say from the formula so we have h prime of x equals to f of a f of b or let's say h so i'm I've used to f sorry that we have h of b minus h of a by divided by b minus a all right so we need to provide h of b so and to do that we know the value of b okay uh, I will just replace, okay, let me just cancel this. Let me replace that b with pi equals to that. Anywhere we see our x in the sine, uh, we are going to replace it with pi. We have sine pi minus sine 2 pi minus pi. And here the value of pi is 180. So just take note of this that uh, pi is 180. So since we are dealing with radian, and here we have um, the h of pi equals to when you try to plug in everything here is a uh, sine of 180 0 and uh, minus so if you press sine 180 so it's going to be 0 and here is sine of 260 so sine 260 is also 0 minus pi so because 2 times pi is 360 that is times 180 so that's how we get this so that is h of pi equals to negative pi and for the second one which is at a equals to zero we are going to have h of zero equals to sine zero minus sine two into bracket of zero minus zero so and the entire of this one becomes zero because sine zero is zero sine two times zero is still zero so we still have zero minus zero so that is h of zero equals to zero as h of b and h of a so the next thing we are going to do here is to rewrite the real function, which is h of x equals to sine x minus sine 2x minus x. Then we find the derivative. So that we differentiate this. If we differentiate sine, we are going to get cos. So calculus is very important here. So if we differentiate sine, we get cos. And if we differentiate sine 2x, we are going to get 2 cos 2x. And if we differentiate sine, we get minus 1. Okay? And so we are just trying to replace this x with any constant. I'm going to choose L. So here we have cos L minus 2 cos 2L minus 1. And here is the value of h prime of L. Then we try to plug all these five things that we have gotten in the formula. And the formula is h prime of L equals to f uh, h of b minus h of a divided by b minus a so h prime of l is cos l minus 2 cos 2 l minus 1 everything equals to y the h of b we are getting it to be negative pi above okay so just try to replace it then h of a is 0 that we got as h of 0. So we have 0 divided by y b itself is pi and uh, a is 0. So we try to replace these two as well as pi minus 0. Then here becomes cos l minus 2 cos 2 l minus 1 equals to a is minus pi divided by pi. And pi divided by pi, so we know what it means that uh, it's going to be 1 and since we have negative attached to it, so we have negative 1 and here is uh, the result we are going to have next because this and this is 1 
So this minus one and minus one both cancel each other. So because if you transfer one to other side, you come plus and plus one minus one equals to zero. So that's why I decided to cancel it, no need to transfer anything. So the right hand side becomes zero. And in this left hand side, we have cos L minus two cos two L equals to this. So we try to transfer cos uh, two L to other side. I mean two cos two L to other side, we have cos L equals to two cos two L. And in this, uh, at this stage, my aim for this is I want to get the value of L. But to do that, we need to pay very attention to this because I'm going to apply some identity and that identity is I want to make this one becomes quadratic equation. And note that if you have cos 2L is a double angle formula and the value of it is 2 cos square L minus 1. Right, so because cos L here is, is still cos L, that's why I go for cos 2L because it has an identity which can make this equation become quadratic equations. Okay, so and cos 2L is 2 cos square L minus 1, it's a double angle identity. So I will just try to replace it above. Then we have cos L equals to so remember that in this, uh, we have two initia, all right. And from this formula, we still have another two. So just make sure that you firstly write the two we have, then you replace cos 2L with, um, we replace it with 2 cos square L minus 1. Wow. So this is so fantastic. So we need to be very, very think of, all right, as a mathematician, you need to think why that, where is the next thing to do. So here we have cos L equals 2. So by opening the parentheses, we have 4 cos 2 cos square L minus and 2 times 1 is 2 and this is making sense so what to do now is if i try to transfer cos l to the right hand side and we are left with 0 here equals to so it's coming here while we have 4 cos for l and when cos l comes it becomes negative we have minus cos l minus 2 and this is automatically from quadratic equations Okay, but how are you going to know that it's a quadratic? If you try to compare it with this standard quadratic equation as ax squared plus bx plus c, you know, our ax squared is just like 4 cos square l, and bx is negative cos l, and c is 2, which is a constant value. And here, uh, I'm going to apply the general quadratic formula, so which I'm not going to write the formula here, so I'll just try to plug in everything. So since our x is cos, cos so we are going to replace it, and we have 1 plus or minus the root of uh we have minus one square minus four bracket so we have a a is still four and b is negative c is negative two so everything divided by two into bracket of a but the value of a is what is four so where i got it is general quadratic formula is x equals to minus b plus or minus the square root of b square minus four ac divided by two a so just try to apply that formula and plug everything you are going to get it so the entire of this is um, we have positive and here is 32 4 times 4 times 2 that is 32 divided by 8 and 2 times 4 is 8 so don't forget you are using L so is it not X and uh, so in this we have uh, we have 1 plus or minus the root of 1 plus 32 that is 33 divided by 8 and which is cos what L we are looking for L not cos so what to do here is if you reach this stage when we're solving mathematics problem so just take the cos inverse of both sides okay so we take the cos inverse of both sides the left hand side cos we cancel then we transfer it to other side and here is the result we are going to have and don't forget that if you try to plug in this in a calculator so we are going to get the value and that value must also be a member of uh, it must be in these ranges of is zero to what to pi and uh which means that the main value theorem is automatically verified please try to plug in this value and verify it is there between zero and pi thanks for watching and don't forget to share this video and stay tuned